Alright guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and today we're going to be taking a look at something which I've always found to be a particularly interesting niche area for PCs, and that is external GPU performance over Thunderbolt 3. This is something we have tested over the years in a few different videos, most recently when Luke reviewed the Asus ROG Flow X13, which had a separate RTX 3080 laptop dock. Today though, we're going to be taking a deeper dive into their technology and seeing how performance scales across four of Nvidia's latest GPUs when using an external Thunderbolt 3 enclosure. And then we'll also be comparing performance from an RTX 3090 in an eGPU compared to a 3090 in a full fat desktop system. The dock in question today is Cooler Master's EG200, a brand new and pretty compact external enclosure. Considering it does use Thunderbolt 3, which will give us four lanes of PCIe Gen 3, that is the same as the vast majority of external GPU enclosures on the market. So actual graphics performance should be the same between, you know, most of those, but we will take a look at some key features of the EG200 later in this video. We'll also need a device with a Thunderbolt 3 port, so we've gone for the Razer Blade 15 base. This is the latest 2021 model and it sports an Intel i7-10750H processor. That is a 6 core 45 watt unit and obviously the actual gaming performance will vary depending on what laptop you're using, depending on the CPU it has. But as a 6 core i7 with a 45 watt power target, I feel this is a sensible choice for our testing today. So. In this video, we're going to be looking at performance of NVIDIA's RTX 3060 Ti, 3070, 3080 and 3090 in the EG200. We test first at 1080p using both the laptop's integrated screen and then with the GPU connected to an external monitor. We also use an external monitor for 1440p and 4K performance, something which isn't possible using the laptop screen as it is only a 1080p panel. We ended up testing 7 games for this video today, it was meant to be 8 but for some reason Hitman 3 just wouldn't play nice unless we were using an external monitor. Still, in this video we're only going to be focusing on 5 of those games as there is a lot of data to get through and otherwise we might be here all day, but if you do want to see all of the performance data from all of the benchmarks we collected, head over to the written article on kitguru.net. Kicking off with Cyberpunk 2077. As a reminder, in this chart we're looking at all four GPUs tested on the integrated laptop display as well as the external monitor. Straight away we can see immediate benefits to using an external display as evidenced by the RTX 3060 Ti, which is actually faster than the RTX 3070 when that GPU is only using the laptop's built-in screen. The same goes for the RTX 3080 using an external display which is beating out the RTX 3090 on the integrated laptop screen. If we focus on the data when using an external display then, overall performance scaling is decent but not quite what we'd expect from a desktop. The RTX 3070 is 8% faster than the RTX 3060 Ti for instance, when we'd expect that to be more like 12 or 13% in a desktop environment. That's also true for the RTX 3090, which is 7% faster than the RTX 3080. It's not nothing, but it's not a huge gap either. Moving on to 1440p then. Here we can only test the GPUs using an external monitor for reasons noted earlier. Even with an RTX 3090, performance topped out at an average of 52 FPS. So that's 8% faster than the RTX 3080, which averaged 48 FPS. The largest gap though comes between the 3070 and the 3080, the latter of which is 20% faster, which is a decent margin. We can also see the RTX 3070 is faring better against the 3060 Ti as it's 11% faster, although that is only a difference of 4 FPS. And then up at 4K, I wouldn't say any of these GPUs can really handle Cyberpunk at max settings over Thunderbolt 3. The RTX 3090 did average 33 FPS, but the 1% lows dip down to 27 FPS. We do actually see better scaling from the 3090 at 4K as we are less CPU bound than the lower resolutions, but honestly that's really just an academic point if the frame rates themselves aren't at the level you'd actually want for gaming on. 
The next game to look at is F1 2020, starting at 1080p. The results from this game once again show a clear benefit to using an eGPU with an external monitor. The RTX 3060 Ti, for instance, is 10% faster on an external screen than it is when using the integrated laptop display. Another way of putting that is the RTX 3070, when using an external monitor, is only 4% slower than the RTX 3090 when using the laptop screen. Even when taking that into consideration, at 1080p we are running into some fairly strong bottlenecking, which could be either the CPU or the fact we only have four PCIe lanes, but most likely a combination of the two. This is clearly shown by the fact that the RTX 3090 is just 5% faster than the RTX 3080, delivering 5 FPS more. The RTX 3080, however, is still 16% faster than the RTX 3070, and that is a decent margin, but still not as large as we'd expect on a desktop system. At 1440p, we're not as limited as we were at 1080p, shown by the fact that the 3090 is now 8% faster than the 3080. The RTX 3070 is also doing reasonably well, delivering 73 FPS, so that's 9% more performance than the RTX 3060 Ti, a number which isn't too far off from what we'd expect to see from desktop performance. And now, as for 4K, we are getting a decent experience from all four GPUs here. The RTX 3090 really does begin to stretch its legs at this resolution, beating out the RTX 3080 by 11%, which is pretty much the right sort of margin we'd hope to see in a desktop environment. The RTX 3080 also manages to outpace the RTX 3070 by 20%. Our previous testing of those two GPUs on a desktop show that margin should be closer to 30%, so we're still not seeing maximum performance scaling, but you are still gaining a sizable chunk of extra performance from the 3080 when compared to the 3070. Moving on though, we come to Gears 5. We're starting to see a pretty clear trend by now that the GPUs are typically 10% or so faster when using an external monitor, as compared to using the Blade 15's own screen. This is perfectly illustrated by the RTX 3070, which delivered 64 FPS on our external monitor, compared to 58 FPS using the laptop display. As for general performance scaling, the RTX 3090 averaged 81 FPS, which puts it 7% ahead of the RTX 3080, which isn't too bad for 1080p. The RTX 3080 is also 19% faster than the RTX 3070, so I'd say Gears 5 is getting us closer to desktop scaling than the other two games we have tested so far. That trend also continues at 1440p. While the RTX 3090 is now 8% faster than the RTX 3080, the 3080 itself delivers an extra 25% performance compared to the RTX 3070, and that is exactly the same margin as we found when testing these GPUs on the desktop. The 3070, however, is 8% faster than the 3060 Ti, which is okay, but it's not quite the 12 or 13% margin that we would expect. And then up at 4K, the RTX 3090 doesn't do a bad job here, averaging 48 FPS, so it's again 8% faster than the RTX 3080. Once more though, the 3080 is stomping on the RTX 3070, beating it out by 29%. Both the 3070 and 3060 Ti have dips below 30 FPS at 4K though, so they're not ideal for gaming in Gears 5 at this resolution. The next game to look at is Red Dead Redemption 2, and we can get through this one a little bit faster as we are clearly being bottlenecked using an eGPU. Performance varies by just 3 FPS at 1080p, regardless of the GPU used, though it is interesting that all four of the slowest results are when using the laptop's integrated screen as opposed to using an external monitor. Even at 1440p though, the results are basically the same, with the 3080 and 3090 delivering just one frame extra compared to the 3060 Ti and 3070. As for 4K, there is a slightly larger gap here, but we're still only talking about a 4 FPS difference between a 3060 Ti and a 3090. Considering this is happening at 4K, where you'd expect to be entirely GPU limited, 
we would have to say that PCIe bandwidth is causing these issues in Red Dead Redemption 2. Lastly, Watch Dogs Legion is a similar story to Red Dead Redemption 2, but this time we're looking at a deficiency in terms of the 1% lows. We do see some performance scaling in terms of the average frame rates, but the 1% lows are pretty consistent across all four GPUs today. At 1440p, for instance, the RTX 3080 is 15% faster than the RTX 3070, when looking at the average FPS that is, but both produce identical 1% low performance, hitting just 26 FPS. It's the same at 4K too. Average frame rates look okay, but we're let down by the 1% lows here. Whether or not this is a CPU limitation or whether it's down to PCIe bandwidth, it is harder to say for this game, but it's definitely something to bear in mind if you are considering an eGPU. So that is it for our individual games testing, but here we're gonna go ahead and look at the average frame rate across all seven games we tested. Starting at 1080p, if for whatever reason you can't use an eGPU with an external monitor, a decent level of performance is still on offer. However, we can clearly see little benefit to the 3070 over a 3060 Ti, and I would say the same for the 3090 compared to the 3080. The 3090 is 7% faster, but that's just a difference of 4 FPS on average. If you are able to use an external monitor, however, you will unlock an extra 10 to 12% performance from your GPU of choice, simply because the Thunderbolt 3 cable isn't having to first send data from the laptop to the GPU and back again, the display output is now being handled completely externally. That said, actual scaling between the GPUs is similar, regardless of what screen you are using. The 3090 is still 7% faster than the 3080, while the 3080 is still 15% faster than the 3070. The smallest gap we can see between all four GPUs is between the RTX 3070 and the 3060 Ti, as we see just a 5% margin of difference between those two cards. If you want to use an external monitor at 1440p though, once more the biggest gap between the GPUs is with the 3070 and the 3080. Actually, the latter of the two there proves 20% faster on average. The RTX 3090 is still just 7% faster than the 3080, while the RTX 3070 is 6% faster than the 3060 Ti. As for 4K, you can just about get away with eGPU gaming at this resolution if you go for a 3080 or 3090, but I still wouldn't say it's ideal. Interestingly here, the gap between those two GPU works out as a 9% margin compared to a 14% margin when we tested both GPUs on the desktop. So the 3090 clearly can't stretch its legs as much when used in an eGPU, but it is still the faster card. So that testing gives us a good idea of what performance you can expect from these four GPUs when connected to an eGPU over Thunderbolt 3. But how much are you losing compared to a proper desktop system? To find out, we took our RTX 3090 and tested it in our regular GPU test system using all the same seven games with the same settings and using the same benchmark runs to allow us to compare the results. Now, this isn't a direct apples to apples comparison as obviously the CPU in the laptop is only a 45 watt i7 compared to our i9 10900K. So that is going to affect the results. However, it does give you an idea of how much performance you are losing with the 3090 when you are limited both by a mobile CPU as well as the Thunderbolt 3 interface. Rather than go through all of our games again, here we've collated the average performance figures to show you what sort of margins we are looking at between the 3090 in the desktop and the 3090 with our eGPU enclosure. Starting at 1080p then, to be honest, it is a bit of a bloodbath. The RTX 3090 averaged 166 FPS in our regular GPU test system, compared to 73 FPS with the eGPU and Blade 15. 
That means we're losing on average 56% performance going with the eGPU instead of a proper desktop setup. It's pretty much the same story at 1440p as well, with the RTX 3090 in our EG200 averaging 64 FPS. With the 3090 in our desktop system, however, we average 132 FPS. So once again, the eGPU 3090 is losing over half the performance when compared to a desktop PC. Interestingly though, that margin isn't quite as punishing at 4K. Here, the RTX 3090 desktop system averaged 80 FPS compared to 49 FPS in the eGPU, meaning we're looking at 39% loss performance. The main reason I would give for that is we are much less CPU limited by the i7-10758 when testing at 4K. Even then though, with an RTX 3090, it is still significantly slower than a desktop PC. Just before rounding out this video with a few closing thoughts, I do want to say a few words about the EG200 we have used in this video. It's actually Cooler Master's first external GPU enclosure and it does have a few nifty features. These include three USB type A ports so you can connect a keyboard, mouse and headset. It even has an integrated laptop stand which will help reduce the overall footprint on your desk. And there's even an integrated drive caddy at the front of the dock so you can connect a 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch drive and have it accessible on your system of choice. There are some downsides to the EG200 though, and for me, this mainly comes down to usability of this dock. For starters, it is a pain to get into. First, you have to unlock the integrated laptop stand. Only then can you access the two side panels, which each need to be removed with two thumb screws. Then you also need to remove the top panel, which is another two thumb screws. And if you're installing a larger GPU, like the Asus Tough models, which I had to do, you also need to remove the top support bar of the dock, which is another four screws. Contrast that with the Razer Core X, which uses a slider and rail system. You literally just pull it out. And it does seem like the EG200 is unnecessarily complicated to get into. On top of that, when you are actually in there, there are quite a few cables you have to do battle with. There's a pretty thick power connector coming from the PSU to the mainboard. And there's also a few trailing cables coming from the drive caddy at the front, connecting to the rear of the dock. Overall, I would say it is a solid option, particularly if you like those additional features it brings. But from a usability perspective, I probably would like it to be slightly larger just to make it that much easier to install a GPU. Anyway, wrapping up this video, I have to say that some of the results we've seen today are genuinely fascinating. I honestly wasn't sure if we would see any difference between all four GPUs, considering Thunderbolt 3 only gives us four lanes of PCI 3.0. What we found was, while each GPU actually proved faster than the last, the margins we saw between the GPUs weren't as large as you'd expect from the desktop. Take the RTX 3090 for instance. On average, that was between 6-9% to faster than the RTX 3080 when using the eGPU. On the desktop, we would expect that to be more like between 10 and 15%. So you are getting extra performance, but not as much as you'd get from a desktop system. If I were shopping for a new GPU then to go in an external enclosure, I'd either go for the 3060 Ti or the 3080. When we factor in the CPU and PCI limitations, I don't think the 3070 can deliver much more performance than the 3060 Ti to justify the extra outlay. And the same goes for the 3090, when compared to the 3080. That said, if you do want to extract every last ounce of performance, I do think it is impressive we are still seeing better performance from the 3090 than the 3080 using just a single Thunderbolt 3 cable. It really does show that this technology is pretty impressive. Additionally, I think it's worth considering how an eGPU is best used. Considering the sheer amount of lost performance when using a GPU in an external enclosure compared to a traditional desktop experience, I'd say the best use case for something like this would be when you simply have no option for dedicated graphics. 
Typically, that would be if you have an Ultrabook, for instance, which only has Intel integrated graphics or integrated Vega graphics. There, despite being between 40 to 55% slower than a traditional desktop system, an eGPU can still give you a very playable experience. The only things to be aware of is you may be CPU limited in certain games, and not all games play nicely with an eGPU, as we have found today. The final takeaway to mention then is, if you can, use an external monitor. On average, we saw 10 to 12% better performance when using an external monitor, as opposed to routing the display signal back to the laptop. We still saw generally pretty decent performance scaling, but if you want to extract every last ounce of your performance, using an external monitor really can make a difference. Anyway guys, that is it for this video. So if you liked it, toss me a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts down below. How many of you guys use an eGPU and based on what we've seen today, would you consider one? You can also subscribe if you haven't already and toss me a thumbs up. In our description, you can find a link to our Discord server where we'd love to chat with you guys about some of these results. And you can also find a link to our merch store. Finally, why not consider backing us on Patreon where you can see some of our content early and get access to exclusive giveaways. Until then though guys, I'm Dominic from Kit Guru and I'll see you in the next video.